Welcome back to Iron Rage, the show where John Romano, Lee Priest, and I vent our frustrations with the world. Today's topic was supposed to be rude people at expos, but before the show, we started doing a little, um, we started talking about crazy people in the bodybuilding industry, and I think that might be a better way to go this time around. John, you mentioned uh, one of the perennial pro bodybuilders on the scene who probably entertained more at the same time got laughs on stage at the Night of Champions every year was a guy by the name of Jocelyn Peltier from uh, Canada who probably is still competing somewhere at some, in some place. He was probably the worst pro bodybuilder of all time, at least in his latter years. I don't know about his earlier years. <coughs> I don't even know how he turned pro, to be honest with you. He was almost like the laughing stock of the Night of Champions. Talk to me about your experience with him. Well, actually, back in the day, he was a decent bodybuilder. I think he won a universe or something, or, or placed in the universe. What, what universe was that, though? An alternate universe? 1960. <laughs> it was, it, it was a, you know, way last century. So, I mean, he did have bragging rights at one point, but the guy, he's like Blackman. He just never quit, you know? So, so <laughs> one of those things where... You, you just say, okay, and enough. You know, it was like Valentino pumping his arms up. When, at what point do you say, you know, <laughs> okay, enough, you know? So P Paltier is, and in recent years, when you saw him on, see, he always did the, the, the Night of Champions, and then that, of course, changed to uh, the New York Pro. He still qualified, so he still goes in. And he goes in, he's he looks, he's as green as Kermit the Frog. <laughs> he actually looks like Kermit the Frog. I think he's still using think, the old dioderm that they used he to does. have. He yeah. does. Comes in the industrial <laughs> plastic can with the roll. Every, you know? every show he wears, he's, pretty much he's always got his watch on too. He goes on stage with his fucking wristwatch on, so I guess he's got a time how long he's out there for. And, because... and, and his posing trunks are always horrendously stained with the dye. You know? <laughs> yeah, wh why is it that if you're gonna, you might look terrible on stage, but why can't you put a tan on and, and, and a suit and, and comb your hair, you know? It's an absolute. He's got, his hair. His hair is getting more like a comb over. I think in his later years, when I last saw him, he doesn't have much hair anymore. No, you might as well shave your head at that point. Few little, few little bits going across. So. Did you ever stand Steve. on the stage with him, Lee? Um, I can't. I know I did the Night of Champions, but that lineup was so big back in those days. It was like all deep. You know, be like. 12 or 15 in the front row, 12 or 15 in the next row, 12 or 15 in the next row. So he could have been there. I just didn't see him. He could have been there. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I did, I did hear someone's alarm going off, so that might have been his watch. He could have, he could have been there. <laughs> <laughs> if you were in a couple of those Night of Champions, he had to be in the show, right? Oh, yeah, because like I said, he was always there. So. Sure. I'm sure they competed. Well, yeah, because I'm he never sure. missed I'm one. pretty sure. They were I'm in the sure. same theater on the same night. I wouldn't call them competing against each other. <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the good old Beacon. The Beacon Theater. Beacon Theater. theater. That's right. But now, Beacon Cafe next door. But now, the, the, here's the thing. Like, like you said, Dave, even if you look like shit, but you're a, <laughs> you're a pro bodybuilder, you should know at least how to put right. the tan on and keep right. it off your suit, right. you know? But you come out with a, with a line, <laughs> it's like blotched to brown and he's shit in them, you know? Maybe, 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 maybe Blackman attacked him before he got on stage. <laughs> <laughs> the only glutes leg Blackman could legitimately squeeze are his, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you know what the funny thing was? If you think about it, I mean, Jocelyn Peltier looked horrendous on stage. I mean, he just, he was unkempt. He, he just looked like he rolled out of bed. But then you got guys like, <laughs> and you mentioned him earlier, John, and I knew him pretty well, Kenny Jones. Remember he won the Bantamweight class? He competed so many times at the National and, and Team, Nationals Team Universe in USA, and he won his class a million times. But, but back then, you could only win your pro card in those Bantamweight classes if you would, um, if you would win like the Nationals. That was the only time you could win your class and get a pro card. So he kept coming in second at the Nationals. And I remember, because he would come over to my house once in a while, you know, and, and, <laughs> and he was so entertaining. He'd be like, I, I, I said, Kenny, you're doing Team Universe. Are you really natural? Of course I am. I wouldn't be able to make the weight class otherwise. He talked out of the shot did in he, his mouth like Popeye. Did he, and he, did he said, come over? To, did, he, did he come to your place and teach you fucking judo? Fucking, ah. hey, you know what? If you want to get in the ring with me, I'm a tough New Yorker. I don't take your shit. But no, I, Kenny wanted to go to the uh, the Fulton Fish Market with me. Like three, he used to go at three thirty in the morning, 
and he would buy his fish because all he would eat was fish every single meal because if he ate meat, he said he would gain too much weight and he wouldn't be able to make bantamweight because this was his theory. If he turned pro at bantamweight, then he could gain all the weight and he was going to be a 250 pound super heavyweight in the, in the pro ranks. Of course, he finally turns pro and he never did it, but he would show up and he, he always was very polished, kempt, perfect hair, tan. Yep. His posing mm -hmm. was amazing. He was a guy who, who just, right? I actually, I actually saw him at the Arnold Classic, and he still looks like a throwback to the old fucking Greece John Travolta days. He had the fucking jacket on, the collar up, the fucking hair was all fucking done like Vinny Barberino. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> well, he still looked pretty good. He'd have to be up in age when he had to be in his yeah. 60s, Kenny, wouldn't he? Well, Lee, what you didn't realize, and you probably didn't know, is that Kenny Jones was a champion on Dance Fever. You remember that show, Dance Fever, John? Sure. He was. Yes, he was. Danny Terrio? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I remember his disco I remember dance. His posing, it, well, his posing routines used to come out dancing, backflips, fucking karate kicks, yeah. fucking, you name it, it was on. That's he, a crazy he, guy he was, who covered, who took, paid attention to detail, John. Yep. He was the most, he, the only thing he didn't have was muscle, but other than that, everything else he had in, in his face. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's an oversight. <laughs> <laughs> Details, details. Look at half the pros today. Look, yeah. Kenny would have been in his fucking element today. <laughs> they don't have, don't have muscle anymore. Fuck. But, but his attitude, he was an Olympian in his mind. I mean, it was... Well, but I will say this. People talk about, I know martial arts and, you know, I'm a good... Uh, uh, Kenny Jones is, what, four foot eight? You know, 135 <laughs> pounds at, at the most? I watched him in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, clear out a bar, the second floor terrace. He beat the shit out of, like, ten guys. Really? <laughs> off the balcony, out in the street, but off, off the edge, I mean, down the stairs. <laughs> Well, it, was like, it was like a fucking, it was like a choreographed stunt film. The way I was gonna, it was like kinda, Jackie Chan. A little, 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 little Jackie <laughs> walks out without a scratch. I was, going, I was going to say, he wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't fighting. He was just trying to show some girl his posing routine. And I fucking got out of control. <laughs> Actually, there's a great story that Kenny Jones roomed with Kevin Lavroni at one of the... What Kenny would do is he would go on, he would pay his own money, go on the uh, European tour after the Olympia. And somehow Kevin Lavroni... This is when Wayne D'Amelio was to put the guys all in the same room together. Everyone had roommates. And somehow Lavroni got stuck in a room with Kenny Jones, who probably drove him insane. <laughs> so Kevin was like playing into the whole, you know, the whole Kenny Jones thing, and he talked Kenny into jumping into a fountain, like outside the hotel in like Prague or something like that. It was like the middle <laughs> of the winter, and Kenny got in his posing suit and was in the fountain posing, and it was supposedly, you know, people thought he was insane. He almost got taken away in a straitjacket, but Kenny and Lavroni <laughs> thought it was hysterical. You know. he, he would peel off anywhere and start posing. Yeah. The street in New York, he would just peel off and he'd start hitting shots. You know, <laughs> anywhere, right on the yeah. street, he would start posing. <laughs> you know, I once asked him, I said, Kenny, because Kenny was complaining about the Olympia, and I'm like, he's like, he goes, ah, these guys like Jay Gutler, I should be killing him. Look at my symmetry compared to Gutler. Okay, all he is is abs. I got flow to my body. I'm like, I'm like, Kenny, Kenny you're like Kenny, 150 Kenny. pounds less than him. Kenny sounds a lot like Steve. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, all my impressions start to sound alike. Must be, alike. must be, must be related. They look yeah. alike a little bit too. Yeah. Man. Be brothers. 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 <laughs> now, Another crazy guy who, we talk, who I've been talking about recently is Colin Van Moger. Here's a guy who has every tool set you could possibly want in a, in a bodybuilder. He's got gifts galore. People compare him to Arnold. He's a good looking guy. He's got a great physique. And here he is. He's jumping off the roof of, uh, of houses into swimming pools. He's, he tore his bicep trying to do a tandem uh, uh, bar, <laughs> a barbell curl with 405. He then went a couple six weeks later and tried to rappel off the side of a cliff. He almost killed himself. He tore his patella <laughs> tendon and the bicep tendon. Lee, what's wrong with this guy? I thought you were crazy. Uh, he's Australian. Look, I understand you got to enjoy life, but I remember back in the days when we had weeder contracts, and those a lot of those contracts stipulated if you got injured and you couldn't train within two weeks, your contract was cancelled. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of things back in the day I would have loved to have done, but I just didn't do it due to that reason because you get a major injury, your career right. is over. So, you know, but all, what we could do now is because he's injured his sort of shit and he seems to fail a lot, <laughs> we should start a poll. 
we should start a poll on what you'd like to see Cullum do next and fail at skydiving, maybe <laughs> bungee, bungee jumping, swimming Wings with the sharks, Wings swimming suit. with the yes, swimming with the sharks, maybe, yeah. maybe um skeet shooting, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, is it, you I think, think it's you know, because do you think it's because he's Australian that he's so kooky? No, I think it's just because he wants the fucking YouTube likes. That's the way it is these days. Back in the day, you didn't fucking worry about doing that. You know, someone, what, Chris Lund's going to come take a picture of you hanging off a cliff on a rope. You wouldn't have to do the whole thing. But <laughs> now they've got YouTube, they're like, I've got to get likes. I've got to do something different. Even on Generation I and the whole riding the skateboard through the apartment complex and almost fucking coming off and crashing into the lady getting off the elevator. It's like, you know, it's just stupid shit. It's like, let me seem like I'm a normal person. You're not a normal person. You're a fucking Neanderthal. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Dali? I mean, the guy is. It was in a movie. He's going to be in this this uh, Joe Weider movie coming out. I mean, at this point, don't you think I, he should say I to himself? Did, I, I did. I, I, did. I don't I need did to do anymore. That, I did notice at the Arnold Classic when they were interviewing Callum and Arnold was there, and they said about. Did you see the Generation Nine one where they mentioned to Arnold about Callum playing him sitting there, and Arnold didn't look too impressed. He just sort of looked at him like, "What? This guy's <laughs> going to be me?" And he wasn't too impressed with his accent either. So it was like. I think Arnold's sort of, it's almost like they're doing the movie and Arnold's got no say in it type thing because he didn't yeah. seem too impressed by the whole thing. But I think back in the day, I think the only one that could have really played Arnold would have been Roland Kicking Just. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. John, hey. who, who else do you think? I mean, would, would uh, the Barbarian Brothers qualify as, as crazy people in our industry? I, I think I think there's a, a, a who's who of crazy people <laughs> in our industry. To, we could probably talk. Pick names out till tomorrow morning, but uh, Dave, Dave, Dave Barbarian was crazy when we did photo shoots. If you just go somewhere, do not enter. You'll be prosecuted. Doesn't matter, Lee. Jump the fence. Jump the fence. Get over there. <laughs> do the fucking photo shoot. So we're in this. We're down to this place in downtown LA near this train yard. That old building where the boxing bag pictures of me were done that you see back yeah, in yeah. Pro Lab days. Yeah. We happen to be fucking fucking shooting away. Next, you know, <laughs> fucking cops pull up, and in they come. Dave's like, oh shit, here we go. So they come over. But luckily, how's this? The day before, I was at the Firehouse restaurant and I had a nice black Dodge Viper. And the police that there were talking to me and then they came out to the car. So luckily when I did the photo shoot downtown, the Dodge Viper was parked out near the side of the road. I saw the Dodge Viper, saw a muscular guy, two and two together. They said, oh, our mate said they were talking to you at the Firehouse yesterday. We saw a muscular guy in the Dodge Viper, so we thought it must be you. So they came in, watched the photo shoot, got a lot of photos with us. Dave took some good pictures of me and the police inside the old warehouse and stuff. So they said, that's okay, you can stay here. But <laughs> but any other time, Dave will have your fucking... I remember one time, how's this? For the Max Muscle newspaper, it was, um, we did the story about the politics in the IFBB. So here we go, downtown LA, one of the biggest fucking Catholic churches, you know, the big fucking steeples and shit. Got the best idea, Lee, put this on. Fucking priest outfit. So here I am. <laughs> I remember those pictures. Good. <laughs> here I am, dressed in the fucking priest cloth, the white collar, and she's standing inside the church, arms stretched out and all this. And when it's over, I'm coming out. I come out on the front steps, and now people are turning up wanting to fucking talk to me, thinking I'm the fucking priest. <laughs> <laughs> Little bit so up. I go along with it, just saying I'm an exchange priest from Australia, just over here on like a missionary type thing, and you know, I just asked them if their little kids wanted to come behind the pulpit and give the fucking priest a blowjob. <laughs> David Paul, Nothing David Paul was one of the Barbarian Brothers who Lee's talking about. Took some amazing pictures. He did that picture of Jay holding up that big O. Uh, he did. Uh, I have a picture I actually used for the, one of the one of the RX Muscle magazines when I printed it of you like holding up the world. You remember that picture he took? I, I it's funny because that wasn't the world. That was actually there's a place out in Lancaster where I used to live in Palmdale, a high desert. It's like in the middle of nowhere. You, you got all these white that. wall and this wall. You filmed a lot of video clips here, you know, music videos there. And what is it? The wall was just curved. So when I bent down and put my arms out. My hands were just at the top of the wall, and that was actually the sky above it with the clouds. It actually looks like the world above me, and it's actually the sky that above me. But, yeah, he's he a great uh, – God, he's got thousands of thousands. I've actually – actually, my friend Doc AJ's brought a lot of the photos off him, and he's actually going to put them all together in a book shortly. So there's tons and tons of photos that David took. David did actually a book. I, it was a very limited release. I think I yeah. might have one of the only copies of it. It's like a coffee yeah, table book. You're yeah, on the he's... cover of it. Yeah, now, yeah, and it's got um, had Ronnie Coleman on the hill with the big American flag, remember? Right. Yep. All those type pictures. Now he remember he, dra he dragged that grand piano out into the desert. Yeah, yeah. It cost I him a fortune. I, uh, I did a 
I did a lot of photos out there in the desert with the Hummer and my dog, and they used to go to that real dry, flat lake bed, or it was just nothing yeah. for fucking miles and miles and miles. You had Flex Wheeler and the piano and shit. And yep. He had yeah, Flex. Like that, so many. That O that, Jay, that Jay's holding up, the, the big O, thing, thing is giant, right? It's like yeah. 10 feet, 12 feet tall. That was part of the word radio. He had to buy the whole fucking thing just for the O. <laughs> <laughs> like, about, where do I keep all of this shit? Yeah. Well, he had it. You know, he had a he had to rent a crane to hold the O up because yeah. Jay couldn't hold it up. I said, David, what is it? What did it cost you? It was like it was like three grand for the crane for the day. I said, what you, <laughs> that was when Bob Kennedy though was buying his pictures for like two thousand a picture. You right. know, that's when photos actually had value to them. Value. But that boxing bag he had, that boxing bag he had for that photo shoot was the biggest boxing bag I've ever seen. And fucking getting it up on the beam in the warehouse took for fucking ever, trying to hold it and tie it up there and shit. But, you know, when you talk about crazy people in the industry, you can't forget about that here's some crazy people. Because as I've just been the, the Arnold, Febo and down to Brazil, you can't forget about some of the fans. Now, some of these fans outdo anyone. Because back in my day, it was like, I remember seeing pros in my day. First time I saw Tom Platts walking down the sidewalk near Gold's Gym. I was like asking for a photo. I'm like, fuck no, no. I just walked past and went, morning. He's like, morning. And I'm like, oh, that's Tom Platt. You know, real, real, real respectful. Today, throw that shit out the window. These fuckers just come up, whack you, slap you. How are you going? Like, I, I can understand some get excited, but some are just like totally rude. They're like, here I am in, here I am at the expo in, at the Arnold Classic. I'm there from, what was it, like 10 in the morning to 6 at night each day. You yeah, stand there all day. I just have breakfast and dinner. I don't really eat during the day. You might be able to sip on a bottle of water. You try and go and eat, you can't because as soon as you go and eat, people film you eating and you're sitting down to come over. I don't mean to disturb you, but you fucking are. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean to disturb you. Can we have a photo? And once you take one photo, then it starts. So right. I'm at the booth at this one time, and my friend brought me some Lucky Charm bars. So here I am eating a healthy Lucky Charm bar. And I go, okay. And I'm not making eye contact. I'm not making eye contact with people. As soon as you do, I can't say no. So. I'm looking down, I heard him ask the um, Black Skull guy, can I get a photo of Lee? He's like, oh, can you just let him finish the bar? He's like, okay. I'm like, cool. So as soon as I make eye contact with him, he looks at me and goes, photo? I'm, like, I'm like, I'm thinking, the guy just told you. So I look at him and I'm like, I just finished this. I'm eating. He's like, okay. So then he walks back out of the booth, goes near the big line where the people are lined up to get a photo. And he goes, don't ask him for a photo because he's fucking eating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, fuck, you can't win. And then this whole thing about you see comments, out angling, out angling. It's like, if you were to see me at a booth, my feet are in the one position. I stand like this. I could be like a, one of those cardboard wax or whatever, Madame Tussauds. I'm like this with my hand out. I could just stand like this and smile. You just insert yourself in the picture. I don't <laughs> fucking move. So when people say, oh, Lee's trying to out angle, I don't out angle. But you get these fuckers that come up, they'll be on this side, though, and they're like this. <laughs> the I'm old like, flex wheeler. I'm like, what are, you, what are you trying to put your fucking elbow into the thing for? Your arm's still small. I've got a 22 inch arm. Yours is still going to be small. And you're like, drop it, dropping your pants near fucking John Holmes. It doesn't matter how you fucking stand. You're still going to look fucking small, you dickhead. So. But yeah, they'll fucking try and out angle you and put their arm close. And then they go and look at the photo. And sometimes if it's not good enough, they come back. Oh, can we do another one? Can we do another one? And the whole thing, too, is I just shake hands. I just shake hands. I just hold my hand. But they're like this. <laughs> they're fucking tense up that's fucking hard i'm like just relax guys a fucking photo for god's sake so I'm like, i mean they just have to get home and put on their instagram look and then their mates go oh look you almost fucking got him look no you haven't almost got them my, my, look, 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 my fucking my fucking forearm here's bigger than your fucking upper arm so don't try and fucking out angle me my fucking middle finger's bigger than your fucking bastard so, <laughs> But the way they just stand there and fucking tremble and shake was intense and so hard. I'm like, fucking relax, guy. Breathe, breathe. You're going to fucking pass out. And then I have to say, you know, I know Bob Ciccarelli got in trouble for it a lot, but when you are in Europe, there are a lot of smelly armpits. I'm not saying that because I'm being mean, but being five foot five, trust me, my shoulder goes into a lot of the armpits. And when they come up and, and, when they come up and grab me close, they go, I love you. Like, my fucking... That arm goes in my arm, but yeah, I've got to stand here all day like this. Fucking smells like fucking the garlic and onion on my fucking shoulder all day. That's fucking. And another thing I want to know is how do people, their hands are so fucking wet, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. It's like, I can understand a bit of a sweaty palm, but I mean, some hands I shake are fucking dripping. And I, and I wonder why I get home and I'm fucking sick with these fucking viruses. I'm popping up. 
I'm coughing up fucking phlegm like a fucking Bukaki fucking porn movie, and I'm fucking just can't believe that fucking it's like dripping wet. And I'm like, and then what the fuck I do this? I got to wipe it on my fucking <laughs> and the next person. I don't want the next person to think it's my fucking hand that's wet. And then two, it's like I walk into the fucking toilet to take a piss. These guys at the fucking urine all like this. They see me walk in, they turn around and go, "Oh, Lee, hi." <laughs> it's like, you're just holding, you're just holding your dick. I'm not going to fucking shake your hand at the urinal. Can we take a photo? Can we get a photo. I said, "How about we take it outside the toilet?" Oh, that's probably a good idea. No, it's not. Let's take it while we're fucking pissing your dickhead. Oh, it's just people are just so fucking weird now. It's like the whole fucking internet crowd and these young kids that think they can out angle people and shit. You can't out angle people. You've got a twelve inch arm. You can't do anything. Fuck. <laughs> So put your elbow as close as you want, or get closer. Then you get the ones that try and get their mate on each side of you. So that's, you're standing that's a in the classic middle. Blackman move. Yeah. I understand. I understand like bodybuilders yeah. like this. Uh, <laughs> I just stand like this, and you get the guy on each side. The guy on each side try and squash you in, so you have to try and squash him like this. And then they get close. And they go, oh, "Look, we're fucking so much bigger than Lee Priest, aren't we?" No, you're not. I haven't seen you on any fucking pro stage. You fucking dick. You've never been on any oh. stage. Lee, what about, about the guys state. who? What about the guys who come up and want you to put them in a headlock? You know, to take a picture with them. <laughs> Lee, can you put me in a headlock? <laughs> I've had guys that you yeah, might want to say, but I, the, worst, the worst things I had are the ones that come up and go. They come up and go, Mr. Priest, Mr. Priest, who, who, can we compare biceps? I'm like, look, you're only going to embarrass yourself. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, fuck, what do you think, dickhead? Look at your fucking arms compared to mine. You want to really compare them? But it's like they do. They're like, can we do a bicep together? No, I don't fucking pose. It's like. I don't like posing. It's like, I'm actually shy. If I take a photo, it's good. I had one guy once, he comes up and goes, can we flix arms? I'm like, look, no. I said, look, I'm covered. I had a shirt that comes down to like my forearm. I said, I don't like doing that. I'll take a photo of you. He's like, sure, no problem. So we take a photo. Next day, bodybuilding.com. That Lee Priest is a cunt. I asked him to flex his arm and he fucking wouldn't. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you can't win. So like I said, I'm off the, bo I'm off the body power <clears throat> next week in England. At least the English crowd aren't too bad. They're fucking covered in tax and crazy like yeah. us Australians. So, but I tell you, that's fucking the YouTubers in the United States and shit like that. Man, are they in a fucking fairyland of fucking angles and shit? <laughs> My God. Fuck. <laughs> But the, yeah, the whole he wet hand, I'm not sure where to keep that hand that gets so wet. I'm like, ugh. And then, here's me though, but then sometimes this is where I get sick, I forget. Because I'll be shaking hands for two hours or so, so you know, like, fuck, I'm hungry. I pick up something and eat it. Then I'm like, ugh, fuck, I forgot to wash my hands. So can you imagine if I put my hand in a fucking Petri dish, what would fucking grow? <laughs> <laughs> you could culture fucking that hell. stuff. I, Yo, I, I think I these guys, Lee, <laughs> get so excited to see you. That their, their, their palms start sweating. It used to happen to me. I would shake well, the guy's hand, and you're right. Wet, wet, wet hands. Yeah, I've had a couple, like even in Brazil mainly, but I had a few come up to me again that when they come up to me and see me, they're just like, some drop to their knees. I thought, oh, fuck, I'm getting lucky here, but no, it's just like the now to me. I thought I might have got a quickie, you know. <laughs> but no, it's just fucking, fucking just bound. But then they start crying, and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, this guy's crying and this sort of shit. It's like, I don't know how to take it. Because like I said, I just see myself as Lee. I'm not fucking anyone special. That's for sure. I'm just a fucking wanker from Australia. <laughs> but when they start crying and shit and tell you, it's like, I understand that my mum always says, Lee, you don't understand that you've changed people's lives, which I don't really, but I guess I have. But man, when they start crying and shit, I don't know how to console them. That's <laughs> all right. Just, <laughs> just when you guys thought Big Lenny was the craziest MO in the bodybuilding world, He's not even close. It, there's a lot of crazy, crazy, crazy people out there. And guess what? When you see Lee next week, no sweaty palms and fucking put the odorant <laughs> on and clean your freaking armpits. I'm Dave Palumbo with John Romano and Lee Priest for another installment of Iron Rage.